Check out FlipsideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. We have a lot to talk about today. GP Birmingham occurred last weekend, which was a standard as well as a legacy event, so there has been some impacts on the market as you could imagine. Also, we have more buyouts to talk about with a big focus on unlimited cards this time around. Quickly before we get started, just a fast reminder, if you're looking for a way to help support what we do here at the channel, just check out the description below. You'll find our Patreon page linked below. You're also going to find links to products on Amazon. Anything you buy on Amazon, once you go through that first link, no matter what it is, we'll get a small percentage for the channel. Finally, Flipside Gaming still offering a promo code for our viewers. And as a matter of fact, I'll leave a separate link there. They have some exclusive Richard Kane Ferguson playmats. If you're a fan of Commander or some of the old school legends, you'll want to check those out. They actually look pretty awesome. So without any further ado, let's get into it. We'll begin with the top five standard legal cards that have lost value this week. Quick reminder, we did our companion video a couple days ago where we looked at Dominaria cards. So today we won't include those. We'll have all the other cards in standard though. So coming in at number five. Kumina, Tyrant of Araska, down 47 cents to $9. So are Merfolk decks even still around in Standard? Yeah, a little bit. If you go and look at some of the smaller tournament results, like Magic Online and such, every once in a while, Merfolk deck can put up a good result. They're going to run three or four copies of this. The problem being, the deck unfortunately just never took off, and the only thing that's really propped the price up of this card all this time has been the Commander seed. A lot of Commander players wanted a copy of this to make as their Commander for Merfolk builds, and that has kept the price actually relatively healthy, all things considered. Well, it continues to go down now, and I think will go down more, especially now that those Commander players, for the most part, have gotten their copies and are moving on to other things. Number four, Rekindling Phoenix, down 50 cents to $27.99. The card generally has been going down because percentage-wise it's seeing less play in this meta so far compared to the last meta, but last meta it was seeing a ton of play, so that's not too surprising. Although, I will say I am a little surprised that this went down 50 cents this week, considering it had a very good weekend at GP Birmingham. All those black-red aggro-slash-vehicles decks running around were running this thing, usually two or three copies typically. So yes, percentage of play might be down, but the card is still successful. I would imagine that it has a nice bounce-back week pro tour weekend, because I have no doubt there'll be some copies of this in the top eight. But for the most part, generally, after Pro Tour, I do think it continues to go down, maybe settles in somewhere in the low to mid-20s. Number three, Walking Ballista, down 85 cents to $21.99. Another card that had a fantastic weekend at GP Birmingham, mostly due to the dominance of those black-red aggro-slash-vehicle stacks. Aside from that, too, this card has been extremely hot recently due to its play not only in those aggro builds, but many others that we saw over the first couple weeks of this meta. And don't forget the play this sees outside of Standard in Modern Legacy and even Vintage. Now, this is stabilizing down mostly due to the fact that it had huge, aggressive spikes over the last few weeks. So yeah, it was due for a snapback. Maybe a little surprising that it's happening right now, especially considering it's almost a dollar. That's quite a bit. But I do think this is another card that has a big weekend during the Pro Tour coming up. Number two, getting into the Trials. Down 89 cents to 21.84. Now, if the black, red, aggro slash vehicles decks have the biggest weekend, I would say the blue, white control decks were second biggest. So this card also had a pretty decent weekend, and I'm a little surprised to see it losing as much ground as it is this week. But again, it has been spiking aggressively, so we knew a snapback was coming. Number one, the Scarab God, down $1.41 to twenty two forty four. So this continues to go down. It didn't have the worst weekend. There were some decks running the Scarab God that came in in the high 20s, low 30s of the tournament. So yeah, there were some decks that top 32 would with a few copies of this card. So it is not gone out of the format. I don't think it will truly disappear until it rotates out. However, percentage of play is just way, way down compared to what this card used to see in previous metas. Actually, all the metas it's been in since it was released. So this will continue to lose value. All right, let's move on to the top five standard legal cards that have gained value this week. Number five, Liliana Death's Majesty, up 70 cents to 1073. You know, Liliana sees a fair amount of really consistent play in the meta, and you see her in mid-range decks, you'll find her in mono black decks, which are gaining a little bit of popularity here and there, especially in the smaller tournaments. She's kind of all over the place. Energy decks will still run her. So even though it's a lot of times maybe two ofs or one ofs in builds, 
she's seeing enough play, I think, to warrant this price point right now. And who knows, if she puts up a good result at the Pro Tour, there might be a lot more attention on this card. Number four, Soul Scar Mage, up 71 cents to 287. Well, this was an easy one. Red Black Aggro looks so good this weekend. This card was a part of those decks, and yeah, it has a pretty nice bump because of it. Number three, Galta Primal Hunger, up 76 cents to 697. Now, the green deck's also gaining a little momentum from week to week. They didn't put up huge, huge results last weekend, but they had some pretty good finishes. So these are both the Mono Green Vehicle deck I would watch, as well as the Green Stompy deck. I do think we'll see maybe at least one of those in the top eight of the Pro Tour that could really spike some of these green cards, like this one, for example. Number two, Jade Light Ranger, up 95 cents to 11.99. This can be found in that green stompy deck, but this card is also a part of Constrictor. That deck feels like it might be positioned well as we get closer to the Pro Tour. This is going to be one to watch in the coming weeks. Number one, Thrashing Bronta down up 280 to 375. Okay, this is saying something because this is an uncommon from Rivals of Ixalan going up 280 this week. Wow. It is another green card. The last two green cards we looked at were rares. They were mythics, but they were rares, so they were appreciating. That made sense. This one is really significant as to where the meta might be going. Again, all the decks we just mentioned are gaining momentum, but I think there's more at play here. The vehicles right now are very, very dominant after this past weekend, and I think a lot of people are thinking about ways to nullify their effect. So this is a fantastic card to do it because it is a good creature on its own. A 3-4-4-3 three, four, four, three is actually pretty decent, and then having the flexibility of being able to sack it to deal with a Heart of Karen or another problematic artifact I think is very appealing right now. That is one of the reasons players are looking harder at decks like Green Vehicle, Stompy, and especially Constrictor. All right, so let's move on to the world of Modern. Modern's a little slower this week, and you're going to notice a lot of the cards that are losing value are due to the fact that Jund is just not performing the way a lot of people expected. So coming in at number five is Tarmogoyf from Modern Masters 2017, down 261 to 77.55. So this is the first card that we're going to see today that is losing ground This part of the Jun deck. Jun really needs a big result. Now, you never know. They could put up a great result this weekend, and all of this could change. It is not a bad deck. It still performs well in the smaller tournaments. If you look at Magic Online, PTQs, and such, like Jun isn't going anywhere. However, it's just not putting up the big major result that a lot of people want to see from it. That could change, but at least for right now, these cards are going down in value. Now, Tarmogoyf, as well as many of the other cards we're going to look at today, it's not like they don't see play in other decks, right? They're all over the place, other modern decks, legacy decks, and such. So it's not going to completely bottom out value-wise, but it could go down some more if Jund can't put up that result. This one, of course, being the newest copy is a good indication of what could be happening in the future to some of the others. Number four, Horizon Canopy from Future Sight, down 408 to $80.83. It's kind of funny, the Iconic Masters reprint has been pretty steady recently, but this copy with the unique border and the unique art has been super hot, back up to around $85 again, which was insane, so we are seeing a little bit of normalization this weekend. Big part of so many great mana bases though, especially humans and boggles and modern. Number three, Dark Confidants. Good old Bob, two versions here. Modern Masters 2015, down $353 to $80.74. Ravnica, City of Guilds, down 511 to 8368. Again, another Jun performer that is underperforming. And the problem with this card even more so is the other decks that run it are playing a lot less of it recently too. Humans, you'll see one copy or sometimes zero copies. It just feels like this card percentage-wise is seeing less and less play. So again, I do think this has the potential to go down closer to the $60, $65 mark again over time, assuming Jun can't make a comeback. Number two, Liliana of the Vale. Two versions here. Modern Masters 2017 down 322 to 11035. Innistrad down 680 to 11130. This card has been spiking aggressively recently. It was due for some normalization. You're seeing it now. But again, this is pretty drastic normalization due to the fact that the Jun deck, of course, again, is not performing all that good. So we have another victim of Jun tier, ultimately. Now, if Jun were to fall off the face of the earth tomorrow and we never heard of that deck again, does this card all of a sudden become super affordable? No, of course not. Because of its play in other modern decks as well as legacy decks, we saw it this past weekend in the GP Birmingham Legacy event, right? And it looked great there. So I feel like this card would drop maybe down to 90 ish dollars if that were to happen, if we never heard of Jund again. But 
realistically, I think this settles in between 90 and 100 and is probably going to stay stable there for a while. Really could use another reprint, but we don't know when that's going to be considering it wasn't all that long ago that we saw this in Modern Masters 2017. Number one, stomping ground from Guild Pack. Down $740 this week to $30. Yes, this is a part of many mana bases. One of them is Junt. Maybe that is at play a little bit here. However, this card has been aggressively spiking recently, and I think it was more than due for a big normalization week, and I think this is it. All right, let's move on to the top five modern legal cards that have gained value this week. And you're going to notice with all the attention right now on Standard and a little bit of Legacy from this past weekend that Modern is a little slow, and a lot of Commander cards are creeping into this list. Number five, Emrakul, The Promised End, up $2 to $14.89. This sees a little bit of modern play, a little bit of legacy play here and there. Not enough to make this card move up $2 in a week, though. This is all about commander right here. This is a great commander card. Number four, Bitter Blossom from Morning Tide, up 206 to 4293. This card did see a little bit of play at GP Birmingham. As a matter of fact, there were two top eight decks running one copy of this. One of the decks had it in the main, one had it in the board. So that brought some attention to the card. And also, you have to remember that in modern, this sees a little bit of play here and there. Maybe most notably the Fairies deck. It's not necessarily a huge deck right now in the meta, but there are some diehard fans that enjoy that deck, and that does run four copies. You'll see it show up in a lot of smaller tournaments especially. So put it all together, this card actually has a pretty nice week. Part of the reason, though, that small amount of play was able to move it this much was because the print run on Morning Tide was really low, so these cards do tend to be a little jumpy. Number three, Braid of Fire. Up 288 to 1747. Another card on our list that isn't showing up necessarily in competitive constructed decks, but is another really good commander card. Number two, Marrow Nar. Up 679 to 2994. This card's been on our list for about three weeks now, and it has been driven due to the fact that Rat Colony came out with Dominaria. So a lot of people are trying to build rat decks for commander, and this is their commander in many cases. So not too shocking to see it back again. However, I do feel like this card is getting close to hitting its ceiling. Maybe it goes up slightly more before it starts to stabilize. Number one, Mox Opal. This is the original Scars of Meriden version of 823 to 109.99. Another card that benefited from GP Birmingham's Legacy events. As a matter of fact, the deck that came in fourth was a Steel Stompy deck, running three copies of this. So yeah, it brought attention to the card that really didn't need any more attention. This is a huge staple in just so many formats at this point. It sees vintage play, legacy play. In modern, it's a part of so many huge decks like Ironworks Combo, Lantern Control, Affinity. This card really, really, really needs a reprint at some point very soon. All right, here we go again with our vintage spotlight. And yes, yes, buyouts, buyouts, buyouts again, especially when you look at a number of unlimited cards this weekend. Now, if you haven't been watching the videos recently, I'm going to give you a quick rundown here. Basically, what's been going on is some folks out there, probably stores more than individuals, because I think they have more resources for this. They go out, they choose a card or a number of cards, they buy up all the cheap copies in the marketplace, and then what they're doing is taking the extra step of listing at least one copy of those cards at a really, really high price. And what that does is it creates a false inflation. And sites like MTG Goldfish, Stocks, Price, they pick up on this in the Crystal Commerce system. If you look at those websites, it looks like these cards are aggressively increasing in value when they might not actually be truly increasing in value. It could be false inflation. So what we've been doing and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you 10 cards. First, I'm going to show you the data from MTG Goldfish. We'll tell you how they say the card performed. Then I'm going to show you the average price of sold completed listings on eBay this past week. Now, when I pull my eBay data, I throw out the outliers. So heavily played cards, damaged cards, I don't count. Slab cards, I don't count. And also, if there is other than English language versions of the card out there, I won't count those because they could have different rarities attached to them. So we'll skip those, and I just take everything in the middle and give you an average from the last seven days. There are a few cards, though, this week that did not have any sales on eBay this week. And I had to fall back on the TCG Player Market Price. I'll let you know when I have TCG Player Marketplace numbers as opposed to eBay. TCG Marketplace numbers are supposedly based off of their sales, actual sales, much like the eBay price. However, I have found typically they're a little lower than the eBay price, and I don't really know how they get their data, so I've been kind of sticking to eBay when I can. 
All right, with that being said, let's get into it. Zombie Master from Unlimited, according to Goldfish of 2171 to 3998. This is not a reserve list card. It has been reprinted. You can find cheaper copies. Is this price legitimate? Well, this is one of the cards, and you're going to find a number of these, especially at the beginning of the list here when we look at these unlimited cards, that was not sold at all this week on eBay. <laughs> so it's not unusual because these cards aren't really in high demand. There's not a lot of people buying these or selling them, typically. I defaulted back to TCG Player market value prices, and this is what they told me, $13.70. So that feels more realistic to me. Again, I don't know exactly where they get their data or when these sales occurred, but this feels like a better price point. Ankh of Mishra, up $29.49 to $49 according to Goldfish. Again, this is an unlimited card. It is not on the reserve list. It's been reprinted. And again, there were no sales on eBay. But TCG Player market value is saying $15.84. Again, that feels more realistic. Next one, another unlimited card. Again, not on the reserve list. Not a very popular card. It's been reprinted. It's smoke of $42.20 to $50. Wow, that's a pretty nice increase. Is that for real? $22.99. Actually, it's more expensive than I thought it would be. But again, this is the TCG player value for this one. No sales on eBay. Vesuvian Doppelganger. Wow, big increase this week. Up $70.80 to $99.99, according to Goldfish. This is the unlimited version. Now, this is a reserve list card, although it did get reprinted and revised if you're looking for a cheaper copy. And much like the other cards we've seen so far, no sales this week on eBay. So what did TCG Player tell us? $59.98. That's actually, again, higher than I thought it would be. And when you consider the fact that Goldfish said it went up about $70 this week, this card has actually seen some true growth. This isn't all inflation, although it's probably partially inflation. So this is one that's kind of interesting you might want to keep an eye on. Field of Dreams. This is a reserve list card from Legends. It's up $147.63 this week to $225 according to Goldfish. And this one I actually did find data on eBay. Actually quite a bit of data. So what did it sell for on average? $67.81. Yikes. Nowhere near the inflated market value of the card. Not a cheap card necessarily but very, very overpriced due to manipulation. Force Field from Unlimited. This is a reserve list card. It's up $147.82 to $395 according to Goldfish. And I'll tell you, I think this price is actually a little more legit than a lot of the others we've seen today due to the fact that this card does see 93.94 play. It tends to be very swingy because it is a hard to find card, especially in good condition. So... Yeah, I've seen this card go up and down sometimes by more than $100, and it isn't true market manipulation. It just depends on the type of cards that are on the marketplace that week. So this could be for real. Now, I go to eBay. No sales this week, unfortunately, but there was one last week. And it went for $285.95, which I thought was probably a pretty fair price for the card. And isn't much lower than the price we saw from MTG Goldfish. A little bit, but not a lot. So I do think this could be more legitimate and probably not just true market manipulation. So I did compare this price to TCG Player, which was a little bit lower. I thought this one was more of a fair market value price. Serendib Ifrit from Arabian Nights. This is not on the reserve list. It's been reprinted a number of times. You can find cheap copies if you want to. According to Goldfish, went up 205.01 this week to $780. That's a lot of money. But I will say this, these Arabian Nights cards are rare, they're hard to find in good condition, collectors like them, and 9394 players like this card as well. So could this be legitimate? Well, there were a lot of sales on eBay, so what did I find? $366.77. Okay, not over $700 like Goldfish was saying. However, this card has gone up a lot recently. I remember when it was probably $150 or so, not that long ago. So this card is appreciating, definitely, and this is something you'll want to pay attention to if you're in the market to pick one of these up. I don't know if it ever goes really much lower than this. Candelabra of Thanos from Antiquities. This is on the reserve list and does see play in 93.94 as well as Legacy. Up $246.50 this week to $1,500. Wow, $1,500 is a lot of money for this card, I think. Is it legit? Well, I did find some prices on eBay. Average was $833.31. Okay, not $1,500, but still, this card has grown a lot recently. 
Mishra's Factory. This is the Antiquities Winter Variant. And this is not on the reserve list, but this version of the card is highly sought after by a lot of collectors. Up $263 this week to $745. This thing has been up and down, up and down. Is $745 realistic? Well, I did find prices on eBay. Average price $276.75 this week. So yeah, it's not over $700. But again, another card that has grown a lot. This was closer to $100 not that long ago, maybe a few months ago. Verdurin Enchantress. Okay, unlimited. Back again. Up $392 and $0.62 cents to $400. What? Is this legit? This is not on the reserve list. Been reprinted many times. Does see some play here and there, of course. What's going on with the card for real? Well, guess what? No copies sold on eBay this week. However, there's one last week. Went for $14.99. I compared that with TCG market price, and they were around $10, a little over $10. So they seemed relatively comparable. Here's the funny part of this one, though. If you go on TCG Player right now, at least at the time we're recording, there is one listing for an unlimited version of this card. It's at $400. So that one card is setting the price for everything. Now, I don't really know what the point of that is if you're not trying to sell other copies of the card for less, you know, maybe like closer to $80 or something like that. However, I don't know, maybe some men just like to watch the world burn. So that's our vintage spotlight for this week. There are a lot of other cards spiking right now, but unfortunately we just don't have the time to talk about all of them. There's just so many. But hopefully the segment gave you some insight as to what's going on. We're going to wrap things up with our Commander Spotlight. Two cards I wanted to show you, although I know we've been talking a lot about Commander in this video. First one, Hall of the Bandit Lord, up $1.47 to $14.99. Not a huge increase necessarily, but percentage-wise it's pretty significant. You always want to keep an eye on these lands from the Kamigawa block. They can move, and this is a popular Commander one. And finally, Spore Frog, up $217 to $468. I actually featured this in our Popper segment last weekend because it was only going up a few cents. It is a very good popper card, actually. It sees play out of a lot of sideboards. However, moving up 217 this week feels like it has more of a commander influence due to Maldratha. So I do think it's probably a combination of the two. So I threw it here this week. All right. With that being said, that's our market watch for this week. A lot happening. There's going to be some modern results this weekend. So that could impact modern, maybe. We're getting closer to the Pro Tour. I hope some of the crazy buyouts will start to settle down a little bit so we get a better picture of market value of those cards. Because the buyouts themselves, even though some of it is false inflation, they do lead to actual increases in value because they put attention on the card. They make people panic and just pick up the card before it goes higher. Some people will just give into the hype. So it actually can create true growth. And I think that's what we've been seeing when you see some of those prices this week. Until next time, though, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.